Revelation 13, 11. Then I saw another beast, okay? So now we see another antichrist figure. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. So John sees a second beast who's called the false prophet. The first beast comes out of the sea. The second beast comes out of the earth. The sea is a symbol of the masses of humanity, while the earth is the symbol of the land of Israel. So it's important to remember these will be the two places. The world will have two main places to focus on during the tribulation. One of those places will be the revived Roman Empire. That's in Revelation 6, 17 and 18. This is that one world government. The other place will be the land of Israel, where there will be the Jewish temple, the 144,000 sealed Jews, and the two witnesses. So understand that those will be the two areas of focus. So the first beast will have 10 horns. The second beast will have two. Remember, lambs don't have horns. So except for this two horns, the second beast, the Bible says, will look like a lamb. He'll look peaceful. He'll look kind, okay? So he's going to try to imitate the lamb of God, but he's going to be a sheep in wolf's clothing, and he's going to be the religious type of antichrist so the antichrist will be this great political power he's going to be the false prophet will be the religious side of it revelation 13 12 um and he also the first beast will get his power from the dragon the second beast will speak like the dragon so he's not going to get his power necessarily the way that first beast does but he's going to talk about like the dragon and remember the dragon will i'm sorry he's going to talk like the beast and remember the beast talks about acceptance diversity love all these type of things he'll talk like that the bible says verse 12 and he exercises all authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So now the Bible says the second beast, who's the false prophet, will have as much authority as the Antichrist. He'll be a third member of the Satanic Trinity, but he'll not use his great authority to exalt himself. So he's not going to bring worship to himself, but he's going to use his authority to bring worship to the Antichrist. So he's going to bring praise and honor to the Antichrist. And instead of um, loving acceptance, of everybody he'll also try to change the world's belief so he's in charge of getting people to worship the one world order so the antichrist political power world politics the false prophet religious power getting people to worship this religion so one world order and then also one world religion and that's where the false prophet is in control he'll order everyone to worship the antichrist and he will not hesitate to use force whose deadly wound was healed refers back to revelation 13 3. he's reminding everybody the antichrist deadly wound was healed and he's come back to life so he's going to keep reminding people of that that will signify the power of the antichrist it will, it will also reveal that the false prophet will claim to be a healer and a miracle worker he'll be what jesus said Remember in Matthew 24, 24, Jesus said for false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. So the false prophet is the satanic counterfeit of the Holy Spirit. And just as the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to give glory to Christ and to point people to worship God, the chief ministry of the false prophet will be to glorify the Antichrist and to lead people to worship the Antichrist. Remember, Jesus said the Holy Spirit will glorify me so the same way the holy spirit glorifies god the false prophet will bring glory to the antichrist so you have to understand that the false prophet will do signs and wonders he will have power to perform these miraculous things and this will be something to also convince the world to worship the antichrist and to worship his power he's going to order followers to honor him and he's going to set up an image or a statue of the antichrist and they're going to gladly do whatever he commands whatever he says He's the right-hand man of the Antichrist. He's the spoke person. They'll do what he says. Revelation 13, 15. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beef, beast should both speak and cause as many would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Okay? So he's going to have power to animate some type of statue or some type of image and then also he has power to kill those who don't worship the beast so you think of nebuchadnezzar who the bible says had power over the nations the tongues the tribes if you don't worship the beast, the image that nebuchadnezzar set up you had to be killed of course we know daniel shadrach meshach and abednego didn't worship this is that type of thing there will be some type of image statue we don't really know all we know is he's going to have the power to animate it to make it come to life and to give it breath so that the statue or the image will actually speak and come to life again this is going to be him bringing worship 
to the Antichrist. Now, we don't know if this will be technology, demonic possession. We just know that it's going to be this big performance he puts on where the statue or the image is going to speak. And he will proclaim all those must worship. If you don't worship, you die. So this is a mass order for the whole world to come into this world religion. And if you don't obey, then you're put to death in the tribulation. So Paul warned us about it in 2 Timothy 3, 1, saying perilous times are going to come. And for believers, this will absolutely be a perilous time where, we're, where people are forced, believers are forced to worship. It could be a robot. We don't know. It could be a statue. But he's going to make it animate and he's going to bring it to life. He's going to be a religious leader, a pretender, and he's going to get people to break the laws of God. He's going to be responsible for uncountable deaths among Christians. Again, he's going to get all those to worship the Antichrist. Um, some of his characteristics are he's the right hand man of the Antichrist. He comes out of the earth, meaning most likely he'll come from Israel. He will be like a lamb. He will speak like a dragon, meaning his words are demonic in nature. He will have the authority, all the authority the beast has. He will force the world to worship the Antichrist. He will perform miraculous signs and wonders, calling down fire from heaven, and his power is going to come from Satan. So the same way that we see fire called down from heaven, if you look at what Elijah did, the false prophet is also going to do lying signs and wonders. He's also going to impress people calling down fire from heaven and doing mighty exploits. Revelation 13, 16 through 17. He causes all, both great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or their foreheads, and that no, no one will buy or sell except one that has the mark of the beast or the number of his name. So here's the false prophet. He's going to mandate, everybody must take a mark. If you don't take the mark on your right hand or on your forehead, you are not able to buy or sell. So remember, when Cain killed Abel, God put a mark on him to protect him. And since the days of Moses, Jews would wear small leather pouches called phyle, phyle, uh, phylecteries. I, it's hard to say the name, but they would wear them and they would strap these around their foreheads or they'd strap these on their left hands. And these small pieces would have the word of God in them to symbolize the word of God on the mind. And when they put their hands like this, cross their hands, the word of God on their hearts. And this is that type of thing that the mark of the beast is going to portray. They're going to put it on the forehead. Why? Because that's going to be the mind. That's going to be controlling the mind of the world. And also worship having the Antichrist on your mind or on your hand, pledging allegiance to the Antichrist. In Revelation 7, 2 through 4, we read about an angel of God that will mark 144,000 Jews on their foreheads. In chapter 14, we'll see that they have the name of the Father, Jesus' Father, on their foreheads. Again, God marks his people. God seals his people. Here comes the Antichrist also doing the same thing, sealing his people and sealing his followers with a satanic mark. Again, he's a copycat. He does things to try to copy what God does. God seals and marks his people. The Antichrist marks his people. This is the pledging of allegiance to the Antichrist. And those that cooperate will receive privileges like buying and selling, like getting groceries, like getting medical supplies. It will be incredibly hard to live without being able to buy and sell. A couple reasons for the mark. Number one, to counterfeit the mark of God that was given to 144,000 Jews to extend favor to those who support the one world order. So this is like, look, if you support the one world government, it's all about getting people to support. It's all about bringing them into the system. Then look, you take this mark, we're going to give you favor. You'll be able to buy and sell. It'll also identify those that are not part of the one world order so that the government could eliminate people so that if you don't have the mark, you automatically get killed. It's a part of marking them to know Who's a part of the one world order? Who's not? It'll also be used to track or to control people and commerce. So they'll know who's buying and selling, what is your ID number, all this type of stuff. It'll also force people to stop worshiping God and force them to worship the Antichrist. It'll permanently tie you to the kingdom of the Antichrist. And those who take the mark will face the wrath of God according to scripture. Now you might say, Isaiah, I'm in this broadcast. I get these messages all the time. I'm afraid that I've taken the mark of the beast but I want you to not be afraid. You haven't taken the mark. The mark is something you choose to take. It will not be accidental. It will not be forced upon you. You'll have to choose to take it. People are saying I'm frozen on Facebook. Hopefully I'm not. Uh, let's see. Hopefully we're going smooth. Maybe refresh it. If you're on Facebook, refresh the feed, but it's not going to be something you're tricked into making. It's a con conscious, willful decision to serve the antichrist and to worship him. So the vaccine, is not the mark of the beast. Number one, the beast is not revealed yet. The Antichrist has not revealed it. We're not in the tribulation. And people say, 
oh, I accidentally took the vaccine and it must be the mark of the beast or I took the vaccine. I didn't know it was the mark. It will not be like that. It will absolutely be a willful decision, not just to take a mark, but to follow the B system by taking the mark. You are pledging your allegiance to the beast. Okay. So the mark of the beast will be something you choose to take. It'll be conscious. Remember revelation 1920 and the beast was captured and with it, the false prophet who is in its presence had done the signs, which deceived who those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshiped its image, they were thrown in a lake of fire. So the mark of the beast and those that worship the worship and the mark go hand in hand together the mark is also an imprint on your body it's an actual mark it's not something that will be injected it will be something that is marked on you revelation 13 16 it also causes both great and small rich and poor free and slave to be marked on the right hand or the forehead the bible describes it as a mark on the outside of your body so this is some type of tattoo the greek word for when it talks about taking the mark means a stamp or a mark on the outside so i don't know it'll be some type of tattoo barcode we don't know but it'll reveal to people you're a part of the system it's not going to be inside you where people can't see it now if i walk up to you am i able to see if you've taken the vaccine no i'm not able to visibly see again I don't want to go into this because I've already made a whole video on this. It's not the vaccine. It's not a vaccine. It is a mark. Okay. Also, the beast must be revealed before you take the mark. You cannot take the mark of the beast if there's no beast to take the mark for or else it wouldn't be the mark of the beast. So the beast has not been revealed. Understand it can't be that. Um, again, I know people are trying to make it what they want to make it. Here's the deal, guys. Just because something's mandatory doesn't mean it's the mark of the beast. If there was a law tomorrow saying it's mandatory that everybody has their house painted white, you can't go around saying, oh man, this painting our house white is the mark of the beast. Just because something's mandatory doesn't make it something. So we don't want to take what's happening in the world and then take the Bible and make them say what we want them to say. We need to stay biblical and we need to understand the order of scripture that the mark of the beast has to come after the antichrist there's no antichrist yet he hasn't revealed himself so please guys be civil in the chat i know some of you don't like this i know some of you are like no it has to be you're wrong but i want you to just make sure that you stay biblical and you don't get caught up in conspiracies and what's going on they've been saying just so you know that things are the mark of the beast for hundreds of years so don't think that it's a new thing people are saying it's the mark of the beast they've been saying it for hundreds of years when the barcodes came out they thought that was the mark of the beast so please 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 stay biblical and use wisdom revelation 13 18 here is wisdom this is what the bible says here is wisdom let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast for its number is is the number of a man his number is 666 and this is what i want to show you john hagee said about this verse he said the information about how to identify the antichrist is no practical value to the church since we will be on the balconies of heaven watching this time take place until he's revealed this cryptic puzzle is not intended to point a finger at some unknown person it is however intended to confirm to the world someone already suspected as being the antichrist and in the adultery uh, idolatry of the end time the number of a man is fully developed and the result is 666 so here's what john hagee is saying the reason why the bible says use wisdom to be able to understand to calculate the number is so that when people are in the tribulation they're going to be able to know who the antichrist is it's not for us to know it's not for us to say oh it's this person or it's this president or it's this leader or this dictator it's for those in the tribulation to know who it is so that they're not deceived